Hey, Mike, how are you? Awesome. It's great to uh, talk to you, man. I'm a, a big fan of the film. Um, I'm not familiar with the books, uh, but, but the film was great. I, I thought it had a great message, and, uh, and it looked amazing. And you had an amazing oh, cast. Cool. Um, awesome. So we'll just kick this right off now. Um, as the writer of such a beloved book, though, uh, what was the most difficult challenge uh, to bring to the screen? I think you want to do service to the original, you know, it's like people love the book and you want, you don't want to, um, you know, disappoint them. You don't want to disappoint Catherine Applegate. Uh, so you want to retain the spirit of, of the book, but at the same time, the book isn't, ex you know, it's like, it needs to also, it needs to, to fulfill the expectations of an event movie, a Disney movie. And, and, and so there's, you know, you have to fill in the plot give it a little bit more of a motor, fill in the world, give some more ancillary characters' voices. That was mainly the challenge. You know, the, the book really delivers as far as emotion right. and the characters and wanting a happy ending for those characters. Uh, but, you know, you just have to make it into a movie is basically the challenge. <laughs> now, I know that Mac is different in the book than we see in the film. Um, why, the ch why the change for Mac? Um, I don't, you know, is he, I don't know if how different he is. I think I think the, the the thing that was complicated with that character was you wanted it to be, you know, it, it, he needs to be complex. He can't right. just be a, a mustache twirling villain. Right. Um, and I think he needs to reflect kind of how our uh, the audience today. It's like you know, a decade ago, you know, some of the things that we feel about circuses and how they treat animals. You know, it wasn't exactly in our consciousness in the same way it is now, you know? Right. And, and so Mac, I think, reflects that. Like, you know, he's not a bad guy, but I think it's like, he, I think he comes to realize over the course of the movie that some of the decisions he's made and the business he's created around these animals isn't really doing them good. And so, so you want him to be, you, you just want to, you, you need it to be a complex feeling, you know, it's like, it's not, he's not just a bad guy and he's obviously not a, you know, a good guy. He needs to come to the, some kind of uh, realization. And I think that that's, that's what we were going for in the movie. Well, you got it. I mean, you definitely hit, <laughs> hit it. Uh, now, was there anything in the book that you, that, that didn't quite make it into the film, whether it be for time or any other reason that you wanted to like possibly get in there? Um, you know, I, I feel I'm really happy with where the the movie ended up. I think it's it's you know it's it, it was a six year process. Oh wow! Um, I started on it in 2014, <laughs> so it's been a long you know it's like there's been many gestations, and it's like at some point you like it's like I can't even remember all the different things right. that have been dropped by the side of the road. So I'm 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 really happy with the final product, especially once it was rendered. It was really different for me to like be a part of a movie that it, you know is CGI. So because right. I would see it in earlier stages and I'd be like, "What is this?" It's like you know because it's like so primitive. And then when you finally see it and it's fully rendered and all of the work that they've put in has come to life, you're like, "Wow, this is the movie that we were always hoping for." It's so cool. So as a writer, when, when you got the role of Frankie, did you? Did you like research like that character specifically from the book or did you kind of know what you wanted to do uh, with how to play that character? Well, that character doesn't really have any uh, dialogue in the book. He's okay. a, so like that was one of the smaller characters that we kind of, we, we created. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, you know, I think for me, it was more like, I think I'd written him as sort of a neuro neurotic obsessive. And I think Theo just like, was like, who could be a neurotic the obsessive and just looked across the desk for me and was like, why don't you do it? Is that really how it went down? I don't know exactly how it went down, but it was, it's just funny. Like, I think, I think as a screenwriter, after a while, you start wondering what you're doing there. Like once most of the writing is done, you feel like you just want to, you just start standing there being a backseat driver. And so right. I think it's fun to be able to wear a different hat and have something else to do. So you're not just bugging the director. Can you talk to me about that, um, the voiceover experience? Because I, I don't know if that's your first time uh, doing that or not, but so can you just talk, talk to me about the experience of doing it? I mean, it was fun. I mean, for me, it was really fun. Uh, and to have, to be in the sound booth with Danny DeVito and Helen Mirren and Angelina and Sam Rockwell, it was like, I was like, wow, this is like the big leagues. These are like the real actors. That was, I mean, it, such an impressive cast. I think that that was like 
one of the the things that like really jumped out. The the cast is so impressive. Um, when they get into the booth and they and they and you like like yourself when you're doing your lines, uh, is there room to improv uh, in, in the booth? Yeah, I think it, that's that's. I mean, and as the writer, I really felt free to like. Right. It's like I'm not going to be insulting anyone if I'm pitching on my own script. So like. And, and I, we certainly encourage the other actors to play around with it because I think that, that you always find new stuff, you know, when you do that. Can you talk to me about Thea uh, as, as a filmmaker and her vision and the direction of the film? Because one thing is I can see the passion uh, that she had for, for the property, like on the screen. It, it really shined through. So can you talk to me about the collaboration process with her as a writer-director relationship and also as a, an actor-director relationship? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was such a long collaboration from developing the script to watching her like mounted and casted and, and all of the all of the decisions that go into the CGI part of it. It's like at one point I, you know, like early on, I was like, should I, you know, because I've directed, I was like, should I throw my ha hat in the ring and like direct this? And then four years later, she's still like trying to figure out how to like move Ivan from one cage to the next. And it's like, I'm like, I'm so glad. I, I do not have the like exactitude and like the perseverance to, to be doing what she was able to pull off. Now talking about Frankie a little bit, can you talk to me about who he gets along with the best in Max Zoo? <laughs> That's a good question. Well, like, I think he and Henrietta, the Chaka Kong character, have a love-hate relationship. I think it's like she, she. Uh, I think he annoys her, and yet uh, she also is like his like biggest fan. So like she pumps him up, and then like gets on her nerves. <laughs> now, uh, what what does Frankie think about living or, or going to live in the wild? What's his stance on it? Yeah, he's like, I, I, I think at one point he says, I was born in an aquarium. Like, what is the wild to me? Uh, but, you know, I, I, I've got to think that, like, maybe being free of his ball and being able to just, like, enjoy the ocean again would be a happy ending for Frankie. Now, uh, did, you, did you base Frankie's performance on anybody in particular? Or, or is it just kind of organically, kind of, you knew what you wanted to do? Um. Yeah, I just, I just, you know, it was kind of on the page and, and then just added my special brand of anxiety <laughs> to the work. Now, um, as the writer of the film, what scene for you was the most exciting to see come to life? Um, well, you know, the, the part that wasn't in the book was the prison escape. And that was kind of my idea because I was like, you know, this is kind of a prison movie. And, and so I think the, you know, the moment where they realize that, you know, just leaving that mall isn't going to solve all of their problems. Like the, the, the idea that nature exists right outside their door is not really truthful. And, and so like that, that sequence, I guess I'm, you know, proud of that, like that, that, you know, seemed to fit into the the architecture of the adaptation. Well, you did an amazing job. I thought this movie is a lot of fun. Uh, I can't uh -huh. wait to see it again. It has so many great messages in it. Uh, but I want to thank you for your time, Mike. I appreciate thank it. You so much. Thank you. Take care. Thanks.